welcome to lecture 6 several students and professionals inquired to elaborate more thank you to all who asked it in actuality i want to compile in 15 to 20 minutes of each lecture please get in touch with me i will explain all the development and application of refactories without information on thermal properties preferential is coefficient of thermal expansion thermal conductivity thermal shock are next to impossible thus a brief explanation may help to solve this we can start with a simple question why when how should we know about the temperature fluctuation for a particular refractory of interest the next question is can we design temperature gradient that is delta t for a particular refractory last question what will happen if that refractory experiences more delta t than the designed one a typical lining pattern and their bill of refractories have been documented in the left hand side figure. Every refractory has specific physical, mechanical and thermal properties and is selected according to operational demand. The teeming level variation in operational time is shown in the right side figure where certain refractory may experience a 500 degree centigrade temperature difference from this zone to this zone but beyond that refractory may experience more thermal shock and early failure through spontaneous micro cracking thus two fundamental mechanical properties we have already discussed and two thermal properties are required to analyze properly these are thermal expansion thermal conductivity followed by their cumulative effect on thermal shock despite that producing refractories with proper raw materials is mandatory to maintain definite specifications as well as processing parameters. Here we will discuss the reason and controlling factors of the main culprit that is spontaneous micro cracking. The phenomena is unavoidable regardless of the sintering or firing rate at which the processing temperature is changed. On site means in refractory unit that is within kiln or in situ means in vessel or steel manufacturing unit. Heating and cooling are common phenomena where both single and multi-phase ceramic experience spontaneous micro cracks after cooling. It is a result of residual stress accumulation by three causes. One, anisotropy of thermal expansion in single phase materials. Mismatches of thermal expansion in multiphase materials, phase changes and subsequent changes in volume in single or multiphase materials. That means single phase, multiphase, or volume change. In more elaborate non cubic grains with anisotropic CTE, these three grains, non cubic grains. Facilitate thermal stress to adjacent grains here alpha 2 is greater than alpha 1. If another material replaces grain B, if I change this one and if we introduce another phase, the additional CTE difference further expedites the micro cracking in its surroundings. That means towards this and towards this. Thus, the influence of the secondary phase is a big concern. Despite the CTE difference, phase transformation includes 
atomic rearrangements and shifts in volume which give rise to residual stresses. These are the three fundamental reasons which are responsible for spontaneous micro cracking. Crystal structures of some cubic and non cubic materials are given for quick reference MgO, MgL2O4, all are cubic, alumina is hexagonal, zirconia has three phases with respect to their at different temperature region, and graphite as hexagonal with having sp2 hybridization. Thus, CT has significant influence and importance and need to discuss few fundamental aspects and mode of data acquisition. The degree of expansion is characterized by a linear expansion coefficient defined as a fractional change in length at constant pressure with a temperature change delta. We can measure both dynamic means continuous variation of expansion or sinkage behavior concerning temperature. That means, if we make scale with variation of temperature, we can get the different degree of change. or static data with a particular temperature of interest. This temperature may be processing temperature or application temperature. Here I have given one typical examples of the reversible thermal expansion behavior of castable lining. After first heating up, if we further evaluate RT for second heating and cooling, there is no permanent change and follows a reversible phenomena. This is I am talking about the second cooling. So, what happens in first cooling? Typical dimensional change behavior for repeated heating of castable lining is shown in the figure, where first heat up exhibits a differential change after heating at the preferred temperature and cooling, preferentially permanent linear sinkage is irreversible when cooled down to the starting temperature. That means, during first heating it follows this path and turning back to this and this is irreversible phenomena from here to here and this is related with the linear sinkage, but in case of the same lining when will go for the repeated heating, uh, repeated heating it will go in this fashion and it will return back to the original state that is the reversible phenomena second heating up. Thus, two types of changes of C T are differentiated reversible and irreversible change in length. In reversible the initial length of the sample is reached again after cooling. In contrast, in irreversible change, the length of the sample after cooling deviates from the initial length due to irreversible phase changes and sintering of ceramics. In general, with declining bond strength, the asymmetry of the energy will increases and thus the thermal expansion of a solid varies inversely with its bond strength or melting point. The material may have positive PLC that is the expansion. This is one example when magnesia and alumina in situ reacted and forming spinel it is associated with volume expansion and it produce positive PLC. Why should we emphasize CT for refractory when there are different oxides and secondary phases present? In actual, refractory is a classic composite material as it is manufactured from natural raw materials or synthetic materials or combines both to sustain load, temperature and corrosive environment together. 
Several phases exist during processing and frequently develop different phases in the application. Different crystal structures experience different degrees of expansion at a particular temperature. Several dynamic CT value of important oxides and refractory bricks are shown in figure. For example, manufacturing magnesia refractory with the addition of zircon is essential to analyze as MGO has a thermal expansion plus 1.9 percent and zircon has only 0 0.06. Sorry, 0 0.6 percent at 1400 degree centigrade. Such expansion difference results in cracking after manufacturing that is not recognized during processing, that means green processing. Dynamic expansion or shrinkage behavior with respect to temperature can be obtained by dilatometer. Static at a fixed temperature, PLC can also be measured in Marfil furnace through isothermal treatment. Now, we will discuss the thermal conductivity of refractories. Usually, phonon mechanisms dominate in ceramics, where atoms experience high vibration amplitude and vibrate violently, and their motion oscillates with neighbor atoms wave like. Such waves may be scattered through imperfections, green boundaries, and pores in absolute analogy with electromagnetic waves reducing thermal conductivity. It can be defined as the product of number of thermal energy carriers, mean free path and average velocity. If we see the figure the possibility of thermal conduction increment with temperature is there, preferentially carbon and porous refractories. These are attributed to free electrons and enhancement of kinetic energy and collision of gaseous molecules in porous body respectively. The thermal conductivity of refractory brick can be measured through the standard transient hot wear method THW. In this process, dq by dt is the heat transfer per unit time over an area plane A normal to the thermal energy flow and k is the thermal conductivity defining the material heat transport ability unit w per m k. In actuality, 1000 degree centigrade is very critical temperature in the primary and secondary steel making process. This figure demonstrates the influence of carbon content on both thermal conductivity and elastic modulus with respect to the graphite content as well as the degree of slack penetration can also be obtained. Eventually beyond 15 weight percent carbon content there is no significant difference in conductivity and elastic modulus. From such a study, we can pick up the best composition for carbon bearing refractories. Thermal shock resistance of refractory is an ability to withstand sharp changes in temperature during high temperature operation. The prime controlling parameters are flexural strength, elastic modulus, CT and thermal conductivity these four which help to maximize temperature jump sustainability of refractories that is delta max. Despite the thermal shock behavior of the refractory matrix high local thermal stresses in metals may only lead to a slight local plastic deformation that further facilitates penetration and may lead to the propagation of cracks in ceramic materials. Let us consider one refractory if there is any crack and if already metal penetrate and cool down and when, when further heated up that metal may experience some plastic deformation and further stress and it may facilitate the further crack. So, that means uh, the metal which has been already penetrated that may further initiate the crack or propagate the crack. 
thermal shock cycle can be measured through air or wa water quenching methods. What happens when refractories experience thermal shock? Temperature gradient causes thermal stresses due to restricting action of neighboring elements of the body results in crack propagation. Crack propagation may be stable or unstable depending on the thermal stress distribution which can be measured through FEA, whatever we discussed in lecture 2. Stable crack propagation facilitates larger cracks and strength gradually decreases as shock magnitude in is enhanced. Unstable crack follows discontinuous strength change and stops, stops when the strain is released. Geometry and material both have influence on damaging effects including elastic instability and crack behavior. Here two typical examples magnesia carbon brick that is the flat surface this and backside and this is the hollow tube the stress distribution and the thermal shock experience will be different and we have to consider different equations. In brief maximum permeable temperature difference one requires maximum strength, minimum thermal expansion and minimum elastic modulus. However, very high thermal conductivity may reduce the steel processing temperature and energy loss. In last slide, we want to touch on our recent work on thermal shock resistance of nano reinforced alumina magnesia carbon refractories. More details are available here and we can discuss as we want. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope you found this lecture informative and thought provoking. I wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Please get in touch with me for further explanations if required. Encountering with your knowledge and interest in the next lecture. Have a nice time ahead. Thank you. Thank you for your patience.